first, we're talking with Michael Menard. He grew up one of 14 kids in a one-bedroom house in Kankakee. He lived a life of extreme poverty and abuse, but over time, he learned how to process and eventually overcome his childhood trauma and went on to have a very successful career in business, becoming the first VP of engineering at Johnson & Johnson. Michael is now sharing his inspirational story and tips on how to overcome trauma at any age. It's called The Kite That Couldn't Fly and Other May Avenue Stories. He joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, talk about the nature of this trauma. Well, childhood trauma needs to be defined because it's so, it's so misunderstood. It is anything that, that damages the heart or soul or body of a child, anything that creates a lasting negative impression. Um, it's, through the research of the book, I found that it's, it's pervasive. But in your case, primarily coming from your alcoholic father. No, he wasn't no. an alcoholic. No. He, well, I guess he was. Yeah, he was. My mother uh, got him out of that very quickly. Um, but we had an awesome mother, but a father shaped by his own trauma. Yeah. So he had a horrible childhood. So he brought to the family violence, the wrong lessons. And because there were 14, um, a life of poverty on top of mm. trauma. So it was a challenging but very interesting childhood. Talk about how... You have 14 siblings, and you wonder, how does this shape every sibling differently? This could almost be a case study between how each child reacted to the it, trauma. It, Talk about how they fared. It's amazing. Um, if you look at the 14, there's a range of disorders that came from the childhood trauma. On one side, the least effective were anxiety and depression, which, by the way, there's 40 million Americans suffering from depression right. and anxiety. Um, and on the other end of that spectrum is suicide, death from the childhood trauma. So we had that, we were like an, a microcosm of, of the country. Mm. We experienced all that and they were all different. I almost feel guilty because I fared better than the others. Interesting. Better than most, nobody knows why. I had two brothers who died of mm. heroin overdoses. Because of the depression, they couldn't get out of their mind. Mm. Mm. So they fell, I, maybe I stumbled, but I didn't fall. And did you learn to cope with professional help? Well, no. Wow. But I, I'm now 73. When I wrote this book, I was 70, 71. And I sought the help of a team of psychiatrists. I paid them to read the manuscript and reflect on it. And what they all said was, oh my, You've all suffered what we call complex childhood trauma. Uh, you need to be treated right away if you didn't realize you were so damaged. And it's a miracle that you're alive because when you experience what I experienced, you will die 20 years too soon. That's from the CDC. Wow. That's and from the CDC. So um, I didn't find out until then and spread the news to my siblings and my oldest brother who had suffered depression and anxiety. He's a superstar human a great life, but he suffered un unnecessarily for his whole life. And when he found the re when I found the research and shared that with him, he immediately sought therapy. And in seven sessions, he was healed from his anxiety and danger. So the message is, you know, if you're feeling that something isn't right in your life, it probably isn't. And you need to step over the line to seek a road to recovery. And it doesn't always require professional therapy. There are other things that you can do to help yourself. What is it that you think made you succeed? Do, do the experts know, like, I'm going to bury this and I'm going to move on and I haven't talked about it and that worked for you? Other people have to open up and talk about it? What, I mean, there's, a, there's a phenomenon yeah. called the paradox of childhood trauma. And what that is, and this is all new to me, is that some of us thrive. It's like rocket fuel. The trauma creates a, a motivation that is off the charts. Mm. So you will find it over and over again. On the other hand, it's destruction and disorder. So I decided at a young age I was going to take care of myself. I remember mm. that day, and I said, it's up to me, and I'm not going to let anybody stop me. Mm. And so that may just be the difference in genetics between you and your siblings, right? And uh, people are different. Uh, 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't know. No one knows, actually, Larry. So, and I know it was a different time, but here's my, my question. I think, especially in those days, uh, neighbors, teachers were hesitant 
to get involved if they saw something like this. I, I bet it's still true to some extent today. What should we do if we see trauma? Maybe it's not in our own family, but it's very close by. I think I, I don't know enough yet to offer a solution for humanity, but I'm, I'm working on it. But what I do know is that we can hit the panic button. 70% of adults in America are walking around suffering from childhood trauma to some degree. Think of that. What would you do if you had a disease that affected 70% of the people? So what do you do? We need to start listening to each other. We need to start loving each other and understanding and not asking what's wrong with you. Ask what happened to you because that begins the, the discussion. And if you've suffered, you primarily isolate yourself. So it's even harder to be, for it to be noticed and you lose, you lose that connection with humans, which makes everything worse because you think, I did something wrong. It was, it was my fault. So you've been putting up walls, succeeding, succeeding. When, when did it hit you at some point that you're, did you, does it wash over you at some point when you think back and, and the trauma hits you the, at a the, certain point or what happens for one you? Of these, one of the professionals yeah. said, Mike, you need to grab that little boy's hand, that little Mike's my younger self and walk through that house, that 900 square foot house, and see what happens. Do it in your mind. Mm -hmm. So I actually went to that house and I did it and it was extremely emotional. Oh, wow. And what that child told me was, it's okay, forgive them. Mm. Well, it's, yeah. it's an amazing story and the book is The Kite That Couldn't Fly and other May Avenue stories. You can check out the website and social media for more. And you've also established a foundation where people can get help and information? It, it's just starting now, and yeah. it's, it's a foundation that's going to offer three things. Awareness, massive awareness globally, free therapeutic services for anyone who needs it at no cost, and finally go upstream and teach parents how to parent. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Prevention. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Michael. Thanks. Thanks, Thank Michael. You. Thanks for having me on.